Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chrisum, and I'd like to invite you to a conversation about your Kundalini awakening experience. And um, today, I'd like to uh, have a conversation about uh, the energetic blockages that can occur in a person's energetic anatomy, or the or the, uh, the uh, chakra system. And remember, you know, the chakra system isn't just, you know, the seven major chakras. They can, you know, there are chakras all over the body, not just seven. Major chakras are the seven, but there are plenty of minor and micro chakras as well. Uh, before I get started, though, I'd like to, to uh, welcome Santara to the program. Hello, Santara. Hello, Chrism. It's good to be here, as always. Um, I hope that people are able to hear us <laughs> today. <laughs> All the concern. Well, the chat room is open. I the question, and Secret tells me it's a little choppy. So maybe if we continue, we could get some more feedback from there. So it's a little choppy. Okay. All right, then. Not sure how I can correct that. Um but uh yeah, just a just a second here, I'm gonna have to sneeze. Uh Centara, if you have some announcements to make, this oh, is a good Oh, she job. says it's better prison. Yeah, she says it's better prison there. So I I let's keep going and let the and Sashi says it's fine now as well. I do have an announcement to make. Um, I'll give the usual announcement about where listeners can make a donation if they are in a position to do so and wish to do so. You can go to the website www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And there on the top right-hand corner, you'll find the Donate button. And all donations that are given to support Christian in the work that he does, not just here on Blog Talk Radio, but he works 24-7 supporting people, teaching people um, that are going through an awakening process, that are going through a spiritual emergency. There are so many ways that he gives his teachings to people. And so if you want to support that work, um, it is greatly appreciated. I'll give you the address again. It's www dot ascension hyphen kundalini dot blogspot dot com and um yeah so I'm just wondering as well Chrism if I could say something about seminars. Go ahead. I go ahead. Okay. Well as you know we had a seminar recently in, in Ireland for Europe and it went really, really well. And we are currently starting to make out a schedule of seminars for 2014. And these are going to be offered in the United States. And again, hopefully, we will have a seminar at some stage in 2014 in Europe. But what we're doing at the moment is I'm making out a register of interest, you know, where I'm going to invite people to write to me, and um, not with a commitment to attend a seminar. It's not about that, really about making a declaration of your genuine interest if you want to attend a seminar. And if you let me know your location as well, it would be very helpful for us and indeed maybe for you as well, as if there is, um, you know, a cluster of interest in a particular place, we will do our best to locate the seminar in that place. At the moment, it looks like there is some interest on the East Coast, but we have not yet decided whether it will be New York or Boston or some other area. So if you're living on the East Coast, for example, do write in and let us know that you have an interest in attending and where you are from. And um, from those, that information, we will begin to put together a schedule. There's going to be a seminar on the West Coast as well, maybe LA, that area, San Francisco. But again, we're going to wait and see. Um, we'll, I would invite you to write in and let me know your location. Um, there's definitely going to be a seminar in Minnesota 
um, organised by Rosemary. She's going to be hosting that, and that's going to be taking place for sure at the end of September, beginning of October, maybe the last two weeks in September or the first two weeks in October. And again, if that is an area that um, you would like to attend, please do write and let me know. I will give you the address. It is Kundalini Matters at gmail .com. So that's it. Um, I'm not getting any more feedback, but the sound is bad, so I'm going to assume, Chris, and that it's okay. Me over and out okay. for now. Okay, thank you, Santara. I'm going to come over here and get some headphones just because I have the feeling that it that uh, there may be repeats happening because my mic would be picking up your words. So I'm going to put the headphones on and and uh, we'll get started. I would like to let people know that there are other places to get this information. One can go on YouTube. And on YouTube, the, uh, the address is chrism.kundalini on YouTube. And uh, you can watch about 275 videos, I think, somewhere around there, all about the Kundalini. It's all about the Kundalini. And, I, and uh, you can also go to Kundalini Awakening Systems, the number one, dot com. So that's Kundalini Awakening Systems one dot com. You can read a lot of the articles there. You can see some of the videos there as well. And on Facebook, we're at Kundalini Awakening exclamation point. And also Kundalini Awakening Systems one at Facebook and Kundalini Awakening Systems two, which is a public group. That is also on Facebook. On the Yahoo Network, we are at uh, the group of the same name, Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at yahoogroups.com, and also Kundalini Awakening Healing, or Kundalini Healing, which is on the Yahoo and the Facebook groups. So there you have it. Uh, today, today uh, well, I'd like to say hello to Chris and to Tim Ashworth, hello. Kristen Harris, hello. Fashti Sigrid, uh, Ma Davis Abbey, hello, hello, hello to everyone and to the uh, to the other guests that are here. Two one five four two one nine three and two two three one and eight thousand nine. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining uh, the live broadcast for this conversation about the Kundalini Awakening Experience, where we're going to be talking about energetic blockages. Uh, within the energetic anatomy, uh, everybody has this. Uh, in order to to survive uh, on this world, uh, people have to develop certain filters and certain programs of understanding based upon cause and effect. You know, if you touch the hot iron, it's going to burn your finger. Things of that nature. You drop the hammer on your foot, it's going to hurt. Uh, so, you know, in in uh, within the Within that understanding, when the Kundalini comes, it is it is it is going to blow through a lot of the uh, the blockages. And by blowing through, I mean literally blowing through. And that doesn't mean like an explosion. Sometimes it'll just send a, a, a small aspect of its energy into the blockage in order to begin to loosen the hold and. When the kundalini does that, and say if the blockage is in the heart chakra, well, you'll feel a, a, a shaft of energy go right into that heart chakra. It may make you feel, if it's strong enough, it could make you feel like you're having, you know, a bit of a, of a cardiac uh, uh, problem, but you're not. You're not. And But I invite you to go to the ER if you need to go to the ER to ascertain that you don't. Uh, but uh, many of these blockages are there as a result of surviving in this society. Excuse me a moment. So as you survive in society, you develop a blockage that is based upon surviving in, in society. It's not a blockage so much to you as your... You know, before the person is awakened, it's only after the awakening occurs, really... In the Kundalini context, that I'm that I'm just I'm talking about this now. <clears throat> uh, 
but I do I do want people to know that this isn't an emergency. This is common. This is very very common, and it's caused by many many uh, various situations. And, and some of you may have some of these various situations happening to you right now. Um, let's see. Uh, looking on here now. Is the sound coming through okay? Can somebody call in and let me know if the sound is coming through clearly? I don't want to, you know, I don't want people in the archives. And hello to you all in the archives. I don't want the archive people to have to listen to a mistake that's happening over and over and over. So if somebody could call in, let me know. Yeah. Chris and John says the sound is really good. Thank you, John. Thank you. Good luck on that poster. And I. Uh, <laughs> Eileen also has just said, sound is good. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Excellent. So let's get right into these energetic blockages. Some of the blockages are karmic, and they they follow you into this life. But you knew about this when you fell into the flesh body. You knew that you you know you would have this blockage to contend with, and it's it, it's not a it, 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 it is somewhat of a problem only because it's supposed to be a problem. It's not supposed to be, you know, all, all, you know, sugar plum fairies and and uh, candy canes in your in your in your <laughs> in your life experience, as many of you know. These blockages from a karmic nature are going to be uh, powerful because they you are here to resolve those blockages, and so. Uh, one blockage can be that of forgiveness. Uh, if you have a karmic blockage com- coming into your energetic anatomy that has to do with a lack of forgiveness in another experience, life experience, well then in this experience you're going to be presented with many opportunities to have forgiveness, which means that there will be people here who interacting with you that are going to do things that will allow you the opportunity for forgiveness. Now, are you kind of seeing where I'm going with this? <laughs> you know, anything from uh, any kind of a problem or any kind of a situation where you would be required to forgive another person can be an indication that maybe something not so pleasant was happening uh, within that equation. Uh, so these karmic blockages are are absolutely essential to your spiritual evolution you came in with them you came in with them and you came in with the idea that 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 you knew they would have to be solved and you knew the patterns of probabilities and the different scenarios that that may present themselves to you in this lifetime before you took the flesh body and and uh and so this is all good this really this serves you well in a kundalini context with this, however, the kundalini will bring this on rapidly and in an expanded format. Uh, it will allow you to to feel in, in a very visceral and tactile way uh, the level of forgiveness that must occur, that you must initiate. And in, in that expanded context with the kundalini uh, certain scenarios may be presented to you that will cause you to have no other option but forgiveness. But this also goes for tolerance. No other option but to be tolerant. You know, you may, you may love being a kindergarten teacher, and as you're a kindergarten teacher, you're going to have to tolerate the, uh, the, the, the different uh, levels of behavior from the children. And so this, of course, would teach you tolerance. Well, forgiveness, you know, it's 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 a very similar situation. And if there's anybody who's listening that would like to call into the show, the number is uh, United States Area Code 347-934-0026. Another cause of, of blockage, you know, that isn't of a karmic nature would be uh, of an embedded entity type of nature. And, and this is also very, very, very common. This is not anything to be afraid of. Uh, we don't know uh, science and, and our the paradigm of reality that our that our society operates from does not really have a very good understanding of what's happening 
uh, within the energetic blends of the dimensions that surround us and interpenetrate this, this dimension. And, and uh, sometimes uh, entities through fear or through another uh, type of human emotion can, can uh, embed themselves in a person. And, and as they get comfortable there, their thoughts and their karmas and their issues may be felt by the individual who's having a Kundalini awakening experience. Or uh, you'll go to a place where entities are, a haunted house or a sacred uh, hill or something of that nature, and the entities that are there uh, can attach themselves to you. And this, typically they'll attach to a certain chakra uh, Flesh divers are, are what I call a, a specific type of entity that purposely will dive into your flesh and, and uh, stream through your energetic uh, anatomy. You can feel that. And, and, you know, they may try to influence you in one way or the other. But, you know, uh, if you stick to the safety protocols, which we've discussed in other programs, uh, you know, it's not going to be a real issue for you. In a, in a way, it can be actually quite helpful for you because you learn what not to do. You learn what, you know, if this entity is making you feel uh, a certain way that is inappropriate, well, you know that that is not you, and therefore you know not to have that kind of a response. And and so it's very good. It's a very good uh, teaching tool. Now, the major chakras uh, can have energetic blockage with the upsweep of a spinal sweep within a kundalini context. Now, the spinal sweep itself, the spinal sweep, it, it won't be blocked by energetic blockages, typically. I, I try to stay away from absolutist statements because I know everybody's different and, you know, it is possible that the spinal sweep would stop at a certain level because of a, of a blockage. Typically, though, uh, before a person can have a spinal sweep, there's a certain level of, of, of uh, I don't want to use the word clarity, but there's a certain level of openness to all the chakras. And that's when the spinal sweep comes, it opens up all the chakras, all at once, boom, right there, right now. And you're wrapped in that level of bliss and that level of light and that level of, of uh, at oneness with everything, at oneness with God, I mean, the amazing, the most amazing experience a person can have. Um, and then that will recede a little bit. You know, it may be a week, it may be three months. A person will be in a, in a certain level of grace and bliss, and then that will recede, and then the real work begins of clearing out the blockages. Those blockages will, uh, that are appropriate to the individual will return, and that person will be given... Uh, teaching scenarios from the Kundalini in order to learn how to release themselves from the burden of that blockage. So let's just go to the heart. A uh, person has a spinal sweep. You know, they, 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 may are, they may know about the Kundalini. They may not. But what the Kundalini will do after an initial spinal sweep or as it is preparing a person to have a spinal sweep is it will it will put that little finger of energy into that blockage just enough for the person to feel it. It'll Sometimes it'll feel like a sharp pain, like I said, a cardiac incident. And then it'll back off a little bit. And then it'll put in a little more energy. And then it'll back off a little bit. It'll put in more and more and more until until that blockage begins to unfold. And, of course, uh, when that blockage begins to unfold, a, uh, a whole level of teaching will, will envelop that person as that blockage is released. And a person may remember why the blockage occurred at all uh, or not. Um, most important, really, is that the blockage is released. And that person can now open themselves in their heart center to levels of love and receiving love and giving love and and uh, really begin to support the, their ascendancy and their awakening process uh, by having the clarity of the fourth chakra happen for them. Um, uh, many 
many people take a while to have this occur because many people don't know that it's the kundalini that's happening to them. And so it takes a long time. It took me a very long time to even figure out that I had kundalini at the time. So, you know, no no internet, very few cell phones, you know, no books on the subject. And so uh, these days, I think uh, a lot of you are, are, are absolutely blessed. And I want to say hello to Bruno Amadori. Hello, Bruno, you sacred male, you and Fasci, you sacred male. Anyway, <laughs> so yes, uh, the energetic blockages can be profuse in a person, and that will be another opportunity for the Kriyas to come along and begin to loosen those blockages. So you may start shaking. You may start being contorted into different positions. You may all of a sudden have emotional spikes that you've never had before. All of that is an indication of kundalini kriyas beginning to have an effect on the existent blockages within the person's energetic anatomy. As these blockages are loosened, well, then the, the forgiveness and the recapitulation and the trust and the faith in the kundalini can come into the person and, and they can actually actively, those who are hearing this, begin to actively embrace this clearing process uh, that can be so crippling if you're resisting the, uh, the 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 healing that the Kundalini is offering with this. Uh, for those of you that might have questions, the number is three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. So as the Kundalini is either preparing or after after it has uh, committed to a spinal sweep on the person, say a blockage in the first is is quite typical so a blockage at the base of the spine this has to do with survival this has to do with fight or flee this has to do with having your basic needs met this has to do with the level of reproduction of the species this has to do with those of fear or fearlessness that a person may have and many people including myself uh, have, have had or actually have at this moment a blockage in their first chakra. And the kundalini will begin to move them. It will move them side to side. It may move the tailbone itself so that the person uh, will have the extraordinary sensation of the tailbone wagging side to side or up and down. And, you know, so, so these kriyas don't come just because, you know, they think it's a fun ride. You know, there's a very, very definite uh, reason why these kriyas are happening, and many of the kriyas are aiding the blockage removal, uh, you know, and it is a, it is a, a ministration from the kundalini that is causing the kriya that is that is beginning to loosen the blockage. Now, if you don't loosen the blockage, or you're not responding, or you're resisting, uh, then some some fairly challenging scenarios may come your way. So if we're at the first chakra and you're saying, "Wow, I'm not gonna," oh my gosh, I am so, I am so not going to to give in to this. I'm not going to, you know, I'm gonna, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cooperate. This is, I'm, I'm not. This is not what I'm used. This is how I'm not used to feeling, and I'm not gonna stop feeling the way that I'm, I'm normally feeling, and therefore I'm gonna resist. Now most people wouldn't phrase it that way, but you get you get the. Uh, you get the feeling. You get the gist of what I'm saying. Uh, well, then the kundalini will begin to bring in levels of fight or flee, levels of fear. Entities may may come along to to uh, take advantage of a person's resistance to to engender fear or to engender a a uh, a resistance uh, concept that the person may find more appealing than having to to surrender to the kundalini. Uh, this may occur. Yeah, you, I mean, there are a lot of entities out there. And, you know, they're watching. Kundalini people aren't that common, and so uh, the kundalini person that is, that is developing, uh, you know, in the early development stages, well, they may become a, uh, you know, a, a bit of a menu for different entities to come along and to stimulate certain uh, responses from the individual, but as the individual begins to learn 
that, oh, maybe this isn't something that I should be resisting. Maybe this is a good thing. Uh, their corrected behaviors can begin to loosen the blockage. And as the blockage is loosened, the entities really don't have a, a remaining food source, and they'll move on, just like any other predator species. You know, they go for the easy food first. Um, the blockages, the blockages can uh, can be expanded uh, tremendously. So, especially in the first, uh, because we're dealing with issues of fear, we're dealing issues of self worth, we're dealing with issues of of survival. Um, and so, as those ideas are are expanded by the Kundalini. The person can really go into levels of Kundalini syndrome that that uh, that can be difficult. Excuse me. Kundalini syndrome is all about allowing fear to come into the Kundalini awakening equation, and fear is a typical indicator of a blockage. So, if you are feeling fear about a certain thing. Uh, of a you know within the idea of and, and the understanding of Kundalini awakening, you might want to look at the levels of blockage that you're experiencing. Um, it isn't easy all the time. It can be very very difficult. Uh, you may have a blockage on your fifth. This having a blockage on your fifth, you have to look. Well, okay, what does the fifth represent? Oh, communication, communication with self and others. Uh, uh, all the all the different uh, mechanizations of cu of communication that happen with the ears, nose, eyes, throat, uh, levels of of hormone activity, uh, uh, all these different levels are occurring in the fifth chakra, and of course, entities can attach to that fifth chakra and can make it difficult for a blockage to be released. But if if you know, if you have knowledge. About the Kundalini, if you've listened to these programs, you have information and you can use that information to your benefit and to begin to release those blockages. But it's not so easy, even if you know. You know how a person may ask, well, geez, Louise, if I've got a, got a, a blockage in my fifth and I'm supposed to communicate with myself and others, well, how do I communicate with myself? Am I supposed to talk to a mirror? Well, everybody has a level of inner dialogue that they use, and so you change your inner dialogue to support the uh, the actual communication of yourself and of your kundalini with yourself, and this will, will, will go to great levels to begin to relieve that blockage, or if you have a flesh teacher, you can talk with your teacher about that and... and and you can allow that conversation to to also begin to ameliorate that issue. Uh, blockages happen all over the place, though. It's not just the seven major chakras where they occur. Most of the time, however, you will get a blockage on the seventh. Uh, you may have attachments on the seventh, but you, you typically will not have an energetic blockage on the seventh. And if if anything like that does occur, then the, the cranial uh, the cranial Migration will typically realign the cranial plates, realign the shape of the top of your head, and allow that blockage to be released. When you're having a blockage in your in your sixth chakra, uh, that can bring in a lot of headaches, serious serious headaches. Now, uh, sometimes people will see things within the Kundalini context that are very disturbing. Uh, typically, in the early process you'll see the faces of people that you don't know uh, it'll just come streaming by there's a face there's a face some are smiling some but they're all looking kind of right at you it's, it's almost as if they seem they know you but also you'll get faces of distorted uh, monstrous type of creatures I don't want to scare anybody but it's you know as much as I don't want to frighten anyone neither do I want to deprive anybody of the of the of the truthfulness of the situation. So I apologize if I'm scaring anybody. But this is part of, of what many people, not all, but many people experience with regards to the Kundalini. So they'll see something disturbing. I was able to see entities' heads coming out of the walls when I was little or having an entity sit in a restaurant, remove his head, put the head on the table, then turn the head so that it's looking at me while I'm eating food. You know... <laughs> <laughs> it sounds kind of funny right now. Uh, 
um, uh, with with that type of involvement, um, once again, you just have to have the knowledge of, oh, this is designed to scare me. Oh, okay. Well, hey, I'm I'm scared. Hello, trick or treat. You know, there's your candy bar. Now leave. So you don't buy into the fear manifestations no matter what occurs, especially when it comes to blockages. Uh, once again, you know, you don't want to fall into the idea of Kundalini syndrome by allowing fear to dominate your decision-making process. Uh, the, you know, whatever is causing the, the fear to occur, whether it's a, a blockage or an expanded insecurity that a person has about themselves or their placement in society, or it's from an entity, it doesn't matter. You make the decision not to succumb to fear, period. You make the decision not to come to the fear, and therefore that blockage becomes removed. Now, another blockage could be you know, negative self-worth. All the person's life, uh, and this is reminiscent of my childhood. You know, I had a lot of negative self-worth when I was a kid, a little kid. You know, and this was uh, exacerbated by uh, different levels of, uh, of parental support. <laughs> You know, and when you have, you know, when you're getting parental support in in a in a level of uh, of self disenfranchisement, well then, you know that that's just like giving permission to the child to go into depression about who they are and how they are, and and invalidate uh, that child's uh, level of existence. So really, you parents out there, do your very best to support your children in who they are and how they are, and 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 honor them. Honor them in that way, especially when they're in the formative years. Um, so, yeah, and so when you have a level of, of self-invalidation uh, that once again gets exacerbated by the kundalini, well, you know, that can lead to, to uh, clinical depression. And that can lead to, you know, levels of suicide or levels of, uh, of self-destruction. And once again, these are all blockages. This is all blockages. Okay. And as these blockages are processed by the Kundalini, the Kundalini will often bring you to situations or bring you to people that allow the blockages to be resolved. Uh, but you have to see that this is occurring or you'll just, you won't get it. So if you are being given uh, a reason to come into this information or for the, you know, for the, for the, for you who are listening right now, and, and, and if you know uh, a person that may be going through this process and they're having levels of severe invalidation for who they are, or how they are, you know, gently, gently, gently begin to validate them for who they are and how they are, that, that uh, change is a good thing and that, uh, you know, you can move from depression into states of uh of uh, validation states of uh of uh taking uh the person's entire existence and and seeing it in a level of love and acceptance and grace and happiness and joy uh they don't need to be clinically depressed and they certainly don't need to be put on psychotropic drugs that are ostensibly labeled as helping people in depression when in fact you know they're doing just the opposite uh, stay away from the pharmaceuticals as much as you can, especially within a Kundalini context. I'm not saying that you, you I'm not a physician, so I'm not going to prescribe or disprescribe. Or, <laughs> not that that's a word. Uh, you know, I'm not going to give you any medical advice, but as far as the Kundalini goes, uh, you know, a lot of these uh, SSRIs are not helpful. Uh, and that has, those will actually develop blockages. Okay, as they, yeah, as they rechannel, you know, certain parts of your brain, well, that's that's going directly counter to what the natural development and formation of your brain was designed for, especially within a kundalini context. And so, you know, the channel, the calcium channel blockers and all these other things, you know, they will develop blockages for a person. And so a person really, you know, when they go in to get help, they're actually uh they're actually being Treated in a very mostly unknowing, but it's a it's an amazing disservice for a person, especially those getting into psych wards. 
Uh, this is my opinion, my unmedical, non-professional opinion. Uh, but that is, as my kundalini is showing me to be the truth. Okay, so do your very best. Those of you that have come out of psych wards, you, you, you will have blockages. And you will need to work on those blockages. And don't think that just because you have kundalini that they're going to go away in two seconds. They're not. It takes, it takes some time to get rid of, uh, of, uh, of um, psychotherape psychotherapeutically induced uh, kundalini blockage. Uh, so, so those of you that have been there and done that, you know what I'm talking about. Um, you can work on these blockages. You just have to be severely honest with yourself. Really honest with yourself. Uh, you know, you might want to just stop thinking in negative ways about who you are and how you are and forget judging yourself based upon how much money you have. That is not important at all. Matter of fact, that's another blockage. Okay, that's another blockage. Uh, you know me, I mean, I'm, <laughs> Centaurus says I work 24-7 to help other people. And to some degree, that's true, but I do try to get some sleep sometimes. Uh, but, you know, the different time zones, I'm in PST time zone, Pacific Standard Time. Uh, you know, India's awake, you know, when, when, you know, two or three in the morning. China's awake, two or three in the morning. Uh, you know, Europe is awake nine hours in advance of, of, of the Pacific time zone. And so, yeah, I can stay awake for long periods of time helping people, but I try not to do it all the time. But I do, I do my best to, to help people, especially those who are in emergencies. And, and uh, those are typically the, the people that, uh, that are just starting to, to have the Kundalini Awakening event. Not all people will have these blockages, but many people will. Uh, so I do, I do try to help. The Kundalini in me insists that I help, and so I follow that insistence. I follow that guidance. I walk the talk that I'm preaching to you. Okay, listen to the Kundalini. Learn from the Kundalini. So yeah, you'll get some headaches from six chakra blockages uh, in seeing things that you just that are maybe a little too scary for you. Seeing an aura around a person, seeing a person's halo. Uh, seeing uh, uh, aspects of creation that nobody else sees. Seeing dead people. That's always a fun one when you're not expecting it. Um, so don't let that, don't let what you see scare you into having a blockage on the sixth. Just realize that it's a big aquarium. And there's lots of little fishies in that aquarium. And we're one of those little fishies, and sometimes other fishies are going to swim right by us, and we'll get to see them. Don't let it, don't let it scare you. Don't let it frighten you. It is natural. Uh, you wouldn't believe the amount of life that is going on around you that is actually of a physical dimensional level. Uh, the typical human scalp, I think, has somewhere on the line of 300 different species of lice embedded in the scalp. Of course, you know, if you got a scalp like mine, they're they're getting a little sunburned, so <laughs> maybe that maybe that's the answer to the lice issue. But there's a lot of there's a lot of bacteria, there's a lot of uh, viruses, there's a lot of of different uh, micro uh, life form creations that we don't see that we breathe in that are with us the whole time. And if you've ever seen a mite uh, uh, under a microscope, you say it's a pretty <laughs> it's a pretty interesting looking creature and uh and you're not afraid of these but you're not afraid of them because you don't see them you don't have direct interaction with them well kundalini brings you into contact with direct aspects of these and these can form a blockage in the sixth chakra and i want to guide you away from that i want you to begin to ex to accept life in all of its varieties here in the United States, we're being programmed to be the same. You know, you have to you're either with us or against us. You know, that's that's the the idea, the ideology. You know, here often that you see in the political agenda of the people in the United States government. You are either with us or against us. And well, you know, I don't buy into that equation at all. The only person I'm with is me, and, and I'm with the Kundalini that's in me, and that's my agenda. Okay. 
So don't let any uh, society-produced agenda develop a blockage in your system. Certainly not, uh, you know, in the appreciation of different forms of life or different forms of expression, which would also filter into the fifth chakra, of course, expressing ourselves, uh, communicating, of course, you know. Uh, be very, very cogent of how you think and begin to choose how you want to think. Don't let somebody else make that decision for you. Don't let somebody else or some group of somebody else's make that decision for you. You're Kundalini now. You're beyond uh, the societal taboos, the societal programming, the so the societal issues and blockages that are developed, but they will still try to foist that upon you. And if you're unknowing of your kundalini and you're, you're just, you know, you're within the symptomology of it, but without knowing what is going on, well, then you can get sucked into these other uh, societal uh, programs. And I'm going to ask you right now that unless you really want to go there, you know, don't go there. Go there. You can choose what you think. I was reading somewhere on Facebook today, uh, you know, this, uh, uh, some guy calls himself Sad Guru, which I think is kind of like, a, you know, he's calling himself Sat Guru, with, but spelling it wrong, uh, using his name instead of the word Sat. And, and he says something very appropriate, I think, to our conversation today. Your brain thinks of millions and millions and millions of things all the time, all the time. And, you know, he's suggesting you just, instead of taking everything, just pick what it is you choose to think about. When you go into the grocery store, you don't buy the entire store. You go in there and you pick certain things. And that's what we're suggesting that you do with regards to how you feel about uh, any given circumstance that may be causing you a blockage. Well, you choose how you think. And when you choose how you think, you experience the fruits of that choice. And experiencing the fruits of that choice would go a long ways to re relieving a blockage in the fifth chakra. And as I move down the energetic anatomy, once again, to the heart chakra, the heart is huge. The heart chakra is... There are so many facets to it. I, I can really only, I can't even scratch the surface of, of, of the mountain that the heart chakra represents. But some of the obvious things, like forgiveness, like tolerance, like unconditional love, like, you know, these things of, these, these blockages that can occur through mistreatment or karma or uh, breaking up you know, with a husband or a wife or a boyfriend or girlfriend or having an uh, uh, elder pass away or a, or a beloved pet pass away. These things can form extreme trauma to the heart chakra. And a, a person unknowing of the kundalini can have that grief uh, uh, amplified times a thousand. It's, it's absolutely terrifying. And uh, if I know a person has uh, has an adult, has a mom or a daddy on their deathbed, and they want to have Shakti Pot, I won't give it to them. I won't give it to them. Absolutely not. After they go through their grieving process, after the, all of that has, has been taken care of, so to say, then if if they're in a, in a, label, in, in a level of stability, then, of course, uh, I may give them that Shakti Pot if they've been practicing the safeties. Uh, but but before the grieving process, absolutely not. Absolutely not. It would be a, a horrible mistake. One that I have made. I have made that mistake. And to some degree, um, you know, I will I will pay for that. But it was an unknowing mistake. I didn't think that that I didn't think their father was gonna die so quick. Anyway. So as we, we enter into the, the heart chamber, uh, here's where a lot of your a lot of the karma is accrued because love is so vast and, and it doesn't go away and it has a direct effect on the present day circumstances of the person. Uh, 
you this is where forgiveness is so so very important do not let yourself develop a blockage against forgiveness i.e don't hold a grudge not hold a grudge and expect kundalini to just ignore it because it will not okay if you're refusing to let go of grudges or if you're refusing to be uh forgiving you're going to get a certain level of blockage removal that that will definitely catch your attention. Uh, sometimes it feels like a very, very sharp, hot blade is being inserted into the heart chamber. And you need to understand that the blade isn't there just to pain you. It's there to get your attention because along with the blade will come certain understandings or certain feelings of a, of a, of a you know, any given nature that, that might have comprised the blockage that that person is holding the grudge for. And uh, that, that experience needs to be honored. It will insist on being honored. And, yeah, you can go to the emergency room. You can have them do all the cardiac functioning tests a whole bit. No, no, they won't find a darn thing unless, you know, they want to find something in there. And, you know, and you've got good insurance. Well, then, you know. There's the Maserati payment for the MD. So, so be very, very aware of what the Kundalini is showing you in the levels of blockage release. And it is showing you this every day. Every day. The, you know, from, from how, you, how you are when you're behind the wheel in, in stop traffic to how you are at work to how you treat your kids to how you treat your friends, how you treat your spouse, to how you, to, to how you treat yourself with you all the time. So take advantage of it. Learn from it and embrace it. And that blockage will be removed. Uh, one of the reasons why it, it can take a lifetime for people to to uh, come in into a, uh, an ascendancy factor, if they're even able to make it that far in one lifetime, is because of the, the amount of blockages that people accrue not only in the in the other uh, spiritual existences, but also in this physical existence. You know, it depends on how how we have responded to our environment. You know, if we're a big person, have we bullied our way through life? Have we done that? And when the Kundalini comes, how do we forgive ourselves for what we have done? Okay, very important to look at this. And even if it's painful, you need to forgive yourself. You can't. It's not just about forgiving the other people. Really, it's about forgiving yourself. Because when you're able to, when you pass from this plane and you're able to see the big picture of why you were here in the first place, uh, you will definitely put in uh, corrective measures and you will jump into the, the next flesh body that you're allowed to inhabit. And you will jump in, and, and typically it's the person with some guidance that will develop the next life of the individual, the next life for that person. Uh, they are so aghast at some of the things that they may have done, and some of the attitudes they may have adopted, and the lack of forgiveness, lack of tolerance, lack of patience, lack of trust, lack, lack of self-esteem. All of these things, you know, add up to these very, very specific blockages, and and uh, they will take another flesh body just to deal with these blockages. Okay, so moving down to the third chakra, the third chakra has to, to do with our connection to the cosmos, our connection to to uh, sacred male, to the sun, to the cosmological influences that affect us every day. The solar plexus is exactly what that phrase indicates the solar plexus the solar plexus okay and uh you know that that will often you know that often has levels of of how you how you see yourself in 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 society, how you see your connectedness to the environment, how you see your connectedness to the universe, how you feel levels of sacred masculinity, uh, how you how you feel about others and and their influence on you, uh, how you how you manifest wellness in your life, how you manifest the ability to stand up for yourself, how you manifest these you know. So a lot of people within 
validation blockages, you know, they have a real problem with their third chakra. Their third chakra can be absolutely shut down. That's how you make slaves out of people. You know, you shut down their chakras in certain ways, certain combinations. Now, most people, have, but, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's kind of the agenda on, on, on some, some people's minds. So, you know, breathe into that third chakra. Open that up. Balance those blockages, those blockages of negative self-worth, not being able to stand up for yourself, not being able to, to take in the grandeur of the solar influences that are coming into you. You know, turn that right around. Read that that uh, that teaching called the crucible of reversal and reverse that process. Reverse that process and begin to really enjoy your your connection to the solar energies that are coming through. Which you know, and, and this is just one area of the third. You know, there are many many other areas of the third that that a person can really get blocked. Or uh, but the, one of the one of the best ways is to recognize what's going on and to do a general uh, chakra balancing. And I'll talk about that in a little bit when I'm finished with the uh, with, with our top down. <laughs> okay, continuing with the top down, this brings us to the second chakra. The second chakra, of course, is all about uh, creativity and, and reproduction and uh, things of that level. Uh, creativity, reproduction uh, has been in many of the societies of the of the Western technological world uh, a a tool of bondage uh, with regards to uh, the idea of procreation. Excuse me. So the idea of procreation uh, turns into something like pornography. Turns into something like S. What do they call it? Um, M. Um, <laughs> BDSM. There we are. <laughs> Couldn't think of it. Uh, so yeah, you know, bondage, dominance, sadomasochism. There we are. Uh, you know, the, the the whole reproductive urge, the whole urge to merge with another person, merge. Physically and emotionally turns into levels of uh, of, uh, of shall we shall we say challenging uh, uh, levels of self worth and, and and role playing and things of that nature that may not be very healthy for the for the individual to experience and they can get trapped in this so that one blockage in that one area on the second chakra can trap a person. For life, inside a, a mountain of writhing flesh. Um, if you've ever read uh, Robert Monroe's Journey of the Body, one of the areas in the astral, which is kind of like a hell realm, is uh, this mountain of writhing flesh where you know people that have been so over uh, interested in pornography and, and the, the actual animalistic nature of sex, um, you know, they get, they get trapped in, and, and that's what they do for a long, 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 long time. Uh, so anyway, if, if, if you can measure time outside of the human paradigm. So yeah, another aspect of the, of the uh, second being blocked uh, are connected to the first is the uh, the adrenal response. A person in the Western technological societies, well, we're just trained to run on caffeine. We get that coffee break, and they have it. Sh it shouldn't be called a coffee break. It should be called a caffeine break. And uh, you know, if we have caf if we have adrenal depletion, well, lethargy will come along, and and it's hard to work. And so we try to make up for that lethargy with more and more stimulants and you know, then we'll add some nicotine in there just to really focus things up for the next, you know, three hours before that other break comes along and you can refortify and so and so, so on and so forth throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the year. Uh, these are blockages too. You need to get yourself clear of the blockages that will kill you. And this is one that will kill you. 
uh, you can you can deplete yourself so much to the point where there's really nothing left, and and then all you you know it, it, it it's this vicious cycle of stimulant lethargy, stimulant lethargy, stimulant lethargy, and it goes on and on and on and on, and this is a blockage. Uh, so this is of course why in the safeties we say stay away from caffeine. Uh, if you've had Kundalini awakening for a while, such as I have, you can yeah you can partake of the caffeine, but even then. You want to do it with with levels of discretion, levels of uh, uh, in a minimalistic sense. Um, so when I was traveling, as Amelia mentioned, we had a uh, a seminar in Ireland, and then I uh, uh, another student brought me over to France, and then I traveled with her, Magdalene de Deus. I traveled with her throughout France and and, and uh, Switzerland and Spain, and and uh, you know there's. <laughs> They don't have any. Basically, we ended up eating at the gas stations most of the time, and so it's just terrible, terrible food. But with with your Kundalini awakened to a certain degree, you can handle these things. Uh, you can, you know, it will detox. It will help you survive because uh, you haven't developed it into a block. That you're just basically within a situation where this world does not provide uh, biologic or organic foods uh, very in very many places at all. Here in Sonoma County in, in California, well, yeah, I get a plethora of uh, of organic opportunities as I go to Whole Foods, which I'll be doing tonight. <laughs> I don't have any food. And, um, yeah, you can eat that way, and, and you can avoid having those stimulative blockages and those digestive blockages that can occur. Uh, through the second chakra, and then of course we're back to the first, and and uh, we've already gone through there. Now, in many ways, I'm talking so fast. I know I'm, I apologize because I'm talking so fast. It's just too much information, and I'm afraid that I won't be able to get it all out. So I apologize if it's hard to follow. Can, can uh, anybody in our in our chat group tell me if I'm just talking too fast? Let me know. If you have any questions. Definitely ask it on the chat. Tara, she'll she relay it to me, or you can call in at the uh, three four seven area code nine three four zero zero two six. Okay, so let's talk about blockages in minor chakras. Minor chakras are in the elbows, the hands, the fingertips, the toe tips, the palms of the feet, uh, the knees, the hips, uh, the shoulders. Uh, 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 aspects of the of the cervical collar cerv- and, and, the, and you know going up into the into the skull uh, definitely uh, both sides of the of the chest uh, there there are there are so many there are too many for me to name but uh, these can also develop blockages so for instance uh, uh, when you were a kid you got your hand burned because somebody held it over a fire and said, oh my god you know that kids do the strangest most awful things to each other uh just to test their their wills and to to exploit the uh the the lack of will let's say some of the weaker kids and so you know that hand shock develops a a a blockage okay and so in many ways uh the person Will have a tremendous level of fear, and and that that hand will, in a way, begin to atrophy in some ways. And I want you to realize that if this has happened to you, uh, you take that hand and you you forgive what was done by those other people, and you just you just really forgive it, and that forgiveness will become the healing balm that that one chakra needs. And the same thing with, you know, the old torture of, of the Cathars was to hold somebody's feet at the fire. Now, this happened to me uh, in one of my first experiences of, of a hell realm. You know, the, a bunch of law enforcement officers, you know, picked me up because I was I was unhappy that they were raping my sister. And uh, they, they held my feet to the fire and started saying, are you with us or against us? And all of this type of stuff. And, and I don't have a, I don't have, I didn't get a blockage from that because after a while I knew what was going on and I was able to learn from it. And so I didn't receive the blockage. And whatever level of blockage I did experience uh, was ameliorated 
because of the crucible of reversal, which I, I recommend everybody uh, begin to participate with. Um, ah, down to an hour. Okay, anybody who wants to call in, uh, the area code is 347-934-0026 uh, with the blockages in Let's just let's just take a, a blockage in the minor chakra of the mouth, uh, above the upper lip or on the tip of the tongue. Uh, what it is that you say, how you, what it is that you eat, how do you communicate? How do you communicate to your body vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, the minor chakra, the tip of the tongue, which is actually a really powerful chakra. It's a master switch which is why the kundalini forces the tongue tip behind the upper front teeth. Uh, so you look at how you're communicating and how you're eating and, and how the things that the tongue has to do with. Okay, And then you, you make a honest determination of, of what you're doing with that. And then you begin to change. Change your activities. Change your behaviors. Change the way you think and change the things that you act upon. If you change the inner dialogue, you'll often change the outer expression. Okay, If you change your inner dialogue, you will change how you affect people uh, in the outer world, in the world that is separate from you. Yes, 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 I know. I'm hearing all the oneness. People's going, oh, but we're all one. Well, we're not all one. Okay, you're one because you you you've adopted that ideology that you think you're one. And but there are a lot of individuals here too. <laughs> and yes, you know there's a there's a, a sense there is oneness within the grand scheme of things. But within the individual karmic uh, balancing person, there's a lot of individualism too. So we are at one and we are plural at the same time. And I know I, I get a lot of heat for that, but it is it is a truth. Um, okay, okay, let's see. I'm going to bring Rosemary on here. You ready, Rosemary? Here you go. Yes. Hi, Hi Rosemary. Hi. How you doing? I'm, I'm uh, listening and I'm saying, aha. <laughs> you know, when you talked about these minor chakras and... I think about the pain in my joints, and we've talked before about my uh, the pain in my shoulders. And and your you pain in your one, shoulders. Were you holding yeah, the, the weight world of the up? world? <laughs> you and, were, uh, you were I, Rosemary, I, Rosemary Atlas. <laughs> well, you know, I was the second of six, and my mother was just really laid back about things, and my older sister was just like her. And there was some chaos in the family, and I just, I said, first of all, it's not supposed to be this way. And I have that view probably about most things in, in what I've been engaged in over my life of trying to make a difference. But when you were talking, I said, I haven't, I, I think I could see that's where it started from, and and one of my sisters, I have five sisters, one of them said once that there was nobody that helped our mother as much as I did. And I thought, oh, my goodness, I can bring forgiveness to that and to myself as well for that little little child having insisting on that. And, and I can, that pain can disappear. I don't need to. Yeah, yeah you don't need to hang on to anything. that. Yeah, and, you know, that's a very, very good point. And I think this is a blockage that happens to a lot of people in their lifetime. And and I think uh, there's there's good things that can come of it. They, you know, they go into into a service-providing uh, uh, a lifestyle mm -hmm. such as you, such as you did, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it can be a very, very worthwhile blockage to develop. But it's not one that you want to keep. It's not one that you want to keep. Once you've done it, then you've done it, and it's time to move on. And and uh, and you do not need to have those pains in your shoulders, and neither does anybody else. Now, a lot of men will have this. A lot of men will have yeah. the weight, 
the weight of the world on their shoulders. They've, they've got to provide for the family. They've got to provide for their job. They've got to provide, 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 provide. And if they're not providing in a way that they feel is the best for them, then then that pain comes in, that pain, that pain, and, 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 it, and it can drive them it can drive them really in 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 strong ways into into depression sometime if they're not living up to the goals that they feel or that their bosses or their society is telling them now did you have any of this uh that happened during your life with regards to that well what you said about the service yes my uh early life choosing to become a, a sister in the catholic church and i was there for 25 years and it's interesting because it was when I really saw what I, why I chose that, and it was just what you're saying, is to make a difference and to make a difference in the family and to please my mother probably. And, um, and then I left. I left and I saw I could leave and I would be a good person, and, but I've still been helping people since. But what, I, what struck me just now, um, Kristen, is... I don't remember these pains in my shoulder before, ah. but it's just these last mm-hmm. couple of years. So when we're talk, you're talking about blockage, uh, there was nothing to be blocked before. Well, that's the kundalini. The, the kundalini will yeah. find will find those blockages, and that's a very you know, Rosemary, you bring you bring up a very good point. Um, a person can can feel like they're at the top of their game. They're, you know, they're they're exercising, they're they're doing great at work and everything is really working well and then the kundalini comes it's like, Whoa, where did all this pain come from? <laughs> yeah. Know, what's going on here? And that's the kundalini uncovering not only current lifetime blockages, but karmic lifetime blockages. And and once again I want people to always to remember the kundalini will offer you the way out. You don't have to try to figure this way out. You just need to begin to figure in your forgivenesses. Mm. Mm-hmm. Your forgivenesses are huge. And so, like, for you, Rosemary, I mean, I think your kundalini just had you reach a certain point within the, the you know, the, being a sister, and it just said enough. She needs to move mm-hmm. on now. Boom, she moves on. Uh, you know, some years go by, and uh, and uh, it's time for your awakening to occur. And once that occurred, and I think you were at the uh, seminar two years ago, right? Yep. Yep. Two years ago in Minnesota, and uh, and boom, the Kundalini comes up, and then oh wow, where did all these blockages come from? And uh, and it's just it's giving you an insight, and I really mean that word insight. She's looking at you from the inside out, giving you information about where some blockages are and what you need to do to get rid of them. And I really want to compliment you, Rosemary, because you have kept you have kept the greatest part of your service to others. And yet at the same time, you have discontinued some of the other program uh, blockages that, that may have become stale within you. Uh, which is what may have caused the Kundalini to move you out of the sisterhood, yeah. you know, and into a. Into, I always like to to refer to you as the flying nun because now you've got Kundalini and. <laughs> you're well, that's true. When I was wings. teaching, I got, um, I um, got transferred here to Minnesota. That's how I ended up in Minnesota. But there's a gal that I keep in touch that I taught her kids, and they used to call me that. <laughs> because I was so busy, and that was always on the move, you know. Well, Rosemary, I want to I want to thank you for bringing up such excellent examples of blockage and blockage release. You're doing very, very well, and I want to encourage you to continue. Thank you. Is there anything? I else am encouraged. Like <laughs> Sir, do you have any other experiences that you'd like to share? No, no. All right. Not. Not about that. All right. Um, no, no, I don't. I, I, nothing comes to mind. All right, all right, very good. Well, thank you for sharing. Are you thinking you of something? You know me better than I know myself. I think at this point. No, no, the, the Kundalini oh, okay. does. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, yeah. no, no, but but thank you, thank you for sharing. 
Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. And I'm also going to bring Centara on because I feel she has some things to say about this as well. Hi, Amelia. Hi, Chris. Hi, Rosemary and everyone. Was I talking too okay. fast? No, not to me, you weren't. No. Anybody in the <laughs> No comments in the chat room about that. No, no, no. Um, What I really, um, what I'm taking from it, what I really um, have from from this conversation, Prism, is how that, you know, the karmic blockage in the energy, it's like an opportunity that's presented for this blockage to be resolved, you know, to the practice of what we need to do over and over to remove the blockage, like the forgiveness or the tolerance over and over, and that's what removes it, that it's it's to be welcomed in a way when we become aware of it. And, you know, for me, I'm just thinking as well, there there is such a thing as layers of blockages, I think, isn't there? Because, like, my fifth chakra, I know there's been a lot of blockage there all my life, and when I look back since Kundalini awakened, I can see that, you know, a certain amount of blockage was released through different, you know, um, things that occurred. And now again, I'm going through what I would call another big <laughs> fifth chakra um, thing, you know, with feeling a lot of energy there and pain and different things that you spoke about. But opportunities for me to begin through the Kundalini to remove those blockages? Well, I, I think you're right when, when you're talking about the layers of blockages, of course. Absolutely. I mean, blockages upon blockages upon blockages. But I don't want people to get the idea that, oh, my God, there's so many blockages here. I don't even know where to start. It, you don't have to start. I mean, you can if you know where one is and if you, you, know, and, and you want it to, to get into a chakra balancing scenario. But the Kundalini will show you the ones that are most important to take care of first. Always, always, always take your cue from your Kundalini. Your Kundalini will tell you in ways that are visual. So, for instance, uh, uh, I'm going to tell the audience what what we uh, talked about with regards to tennis shoes earlier today. Okay? Yeah, sure. Okay. So I was talking with Santara uh, before the show today, and and uh, she said that her kundalini kept showing her pictures of my need for tennis shoes. And she, she asked me, she said, have shoes? Kristen, do you have tennis shoes that are, that are okay? And, and I was thinking, well, yeah, I, I think I do. And I told her, I don't usually buy expensive tennis shoes. I, most of the shoes I buy are under $20. And, uh, and then the kundalini with me said, no, 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 no. That's not the information that's being given. What's being given is that you need to wear out your tennis shoes by doing more exercise and not sitting in front of the computer as much as you do. Ah, got it, got it. So, yeah, that uh, that was the advice of Centaurus Kundalini and my Kundalini to me was to get out and get some more exercise, wear out some of those tennis shoes that I have. It wasn't talking about buying me shoes. It was talking about me using my shoes. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I had and, a good and when, when you said that, Chris, um, I went into bliss. Yeah. So that yeah. it was, it was. I knew that that was that what you said was true. And when I, you know, when I'm talking about the blockages, you're so right. Each, it's retrospectively looking back that I can see it, and I'm sure in a year's time it will be the same. It's if you go with what the Kundalini is giving at that particular time. People have combinations now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can come into this with with a lot of blockages, but the Kundalini will know the correct combination of of of. of of going into the blockage and allowing that one to be relieved and then moving into another area to allow that. And it's a pattern that is being developed by the Kundalini for a very specific purpose within the individual. And uh, so it's, it's, it's really, 
extremely important for people to understand that that there is no uh, linear uh, chakra balancing that the Kundalini will give. It will give you the balancing that it feels is required for your system at this time in your life. And it's, it's really important that people pay attention to that and learn to discern what the Kundalini is telling you. And once again, you know, uh, you know, Amelia thought that it was all about me not having any shoes because she kept she was she kept being shown shoes, 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 and basically it's a it's a lesson for her to learn that just because you're seeing a certain symbol over and over and over again doesn't mean what you think it means. Kundalini has a hundred thousand different meanings behind any one single given. Uh, uh, communication that the person is is uh, acquiring and the level of bliss when you find out the correct meaning is is a great way to learn I mean in a way it's a very basic way of learning you know we we get rewarded for the right answer but in this case the rewarding is bliss and it's uh, it's the uh, the receiving of the teaching in that way uh, so so well thank you uh, Amelia Centara for, for letting me uh, uh, talk about that little teaching I received this morning. And thank you for the teaching today. It was, it was great. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. And I'm going to go with the blue here, and there we go. So if there is anybody here on, on, the, uh, on the chat group that would like to ask a question, uh, I'd like to say hello to Nathaniel Knows Best, and there was uh, another person called Nature Girl, and uh, Fashji, uh, you mentioned that uh, you may be calling in, and and I would prefer that we do it not so close to the end of the hour, uh, so that I don't want to have to rush uh, any kind of a response uh, for you. So if you feel like calling in and, and if you have any comments or a question to ask, uh, it's always welcome to hear your divine male voice on this program. Uh, Kundalini will, as I mentioned before, will have a level of combination blockage removal for a person. And that's fine, and I want you to pay attention to that. What you can do is you can go into each chakra and you can do a, a, a what I call chakra breathing into each chakra. Now you can chakra breathe any of the chakras anywhere on the body. You know, from the you know from from your big toe to the, your earlobe, you can chakra breathe any of those areas. But what I'll suggest that you do is that you breathe from the first to the sixth, and as you breathe into each chakra, going up that way. Uh, the level of prana that is being given into that chakra will also begin to highlight uh, certain levels of of blockage that have been developed uh, along your path into the kundalini. And, And this is a way to red flag some of the areas that you have in each chakra. And don't be afraid to do this daily. Don't be afraid to do it daily. And it's it's typically not a one-time shot removal. Now, sometimes it is. Sometimes it is, but it typically isn't. Sometimes you make a mistake that is so bad and it forms a blockage so strong that once you correct it, you already know you will never forget it. And so, you know, that's a one-time shot that's that's been fixed. You don't have to continuously go over it over and over, uh, over, uh, you know, all the time. Uh, other things, uh, such as relationship blockages, those are layers of blockages. You know, uh, you know, how did I communicate? Did I communicate love enough? Did, you know, am I am I a good provider? Am I, a, you know, ha- have I been honest? Or am I am I keeping secrets? You know, uh, am I being overly judgmental, overly controlling? What you know, how am I in 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 my relationships? And then of course. You can answer your questions honestly, and when you answer those questions, that information can serve to release those blockages in your system. Very, 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 very important because blockages blockages are a are a doorway for illness. As Rosemary mentioned, you know, she had all of a sudden she had pain in her shoulders, you know, and and uh, you know. 
person would, without Kundalini knowledge, would immediately go to their MD. Oh yeah, I got pain in my shoulders. And, you know, the best the MD is going to do is, oh here, take this pain drug. <laughs> here, take this, take this pill. And of course, then you're going to take the pill, and then psychosomatically, you may develop uh, um, arthritic symptoms. You may give yourself arthritis through a blockage. Often the kundalini comes to people and and in some of the joint areas, like in the elbow and the shoulders most of the time, uh, sharp, sharp pains can occur. And nothing is wrong. It's just that that area of the body is extremely tight in its balance. And Excuse me. And sometimes that balance is disrupted when the kundalini comes in and begins to to change the level of of uh, energetic distribution within that very very tight setting. And as that tight setting is unbalanced, well, you can feel pain. Um, I, I, I have had this happen in the wrist, uh, in the uh, in the elbow, and in the shoulder. Um, sometimes a little bit with the feet too. <laughs> Kundalini will go into your the the uh, sole of your foot and and cause you to hyper arch, hyper arch your feet. And I'm sure some of you know what I'm talking about with the hyper arched feet. And as these feet are hyper arching, uh, a person can can really feel the blockages that have occurred over the years. With regard to the to the blockages there, well, you know, to the activities done to the foot, you know, uh, let me give you an example of that. One form of uh, Indian uh, dancing, and, and I don't mean Native American, but I mean, you know, uh, people from the, the the subcontinent of India. One of their dancing forms that the girls do is to slam the ball of their foot into the into the dirt or into the cement and it's a you know it's 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 it's, it's a fairly uh uh a dramatic uh level of impact that these young ladies are are doing to the balls of their feet in order to make those bells ring and to do it in a certain way uh that can develop blockages in the foot that can actually injure the foot too i i would never ever uh, suggest that people do that over a long period of time. Uh, but, you know, the same with football players, you know, as they slam into each other with all the pads and all those things, those will develop physical blockages as well as, as a way of communicating to the person that, well, yeah, okay, uh, I know you like the game, but, you know, your body's not going to last if you keep doing this. So that kind of a blockage can communicate directly to the ego consciousness of the person, and that ego consciousness uh, will will either choose to continue or not. Um, but as you breathe up from the base of the spine to the to the uh, third eye region, and I didn't, you know, be easy on the third eye region. That's a very 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 sensitive area. Typically, I have people breathe up to the throat. Those are the safest areas. The first five chakras go with the first five Tibetans, et cetera, et cetera. But if you're having a lot of issues of blockage in the third eye area, then, of course, you know, maybe a, you can breathe into the third eye, maybe one-fourth of what you would say breathe into the heart chakra or the third chakra, second or first or fifth. So, you know, with that in mind, you know, be very, very, very careful with your third eye because it can be extremely excruciatingly painful if you... Uh, if you try to super induce uh, not only a blockage clearing, but oh, I need some phenomena here too. You know, da, 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 da. be careful about the phenomena you wish for because you don't know what's out there. Um, and even though you don't have to be afraid of it, it's not always the most pleasant experience. You know, you're actively going out there just to engage phenomena, which I would never suggest people do. I never suggest that you go out just for phenomena's sake. To do that, we're always on an ascendancy platform. We're always climbing up the mountain. We can enjoy the view, but that doesn't mean we have to jump into the view. If we jump into the view, then we fall a long ways down. So don't jump into the view. Enjoy it and continue climbing up the mountain. And let's see, uh, Centaur, do we have a question there? Let's see, somebody's called in. Okay. I will invite everybody to call in. 
The number is 347-934-0026. Hello. Well, hello. <laughs> hello, Master C. <laughs> ah, how are you? How are you, Fasi? I'm I'm coming along. I I have been experiencing uh, some of the, the issues that you speak of. Mm. I um, um, have had some pains in my chest, and bus, um, bus, bus. can you turn your computer down? Yes, I'm trying to mute it now. There. Yeah. There. Thank you. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, forgive me for that. I um, I've been having some pains in my chest uh, that resemble angina, um, and my first concern was to contact a, car, um, uh, a cardiologist. Um, I have did to you, preface did you do it? this. Yes, I did, but good, um, good. Good. I um, I I kind of got the urge or the impulse today to uh, push it out. Uh, and see if indeed this was a blockage that had something to do with um, my forgiveness for a certain issue in my life. So um, I, it, it is a pain that extends down my left arm, uh, I might add, and um, that's what I felt gave me um, the the yes answer that uh, I need to get in and see the uh, cardiologist. However, for some reason, I got this strong impulse today uh, not to go in but to just wait and see. Uh, of course, there's always the uh, uh, the emergency room if indeed it should start to become an issue. But um, along with that, I've had some, some problems with my uh, <coughs> My left leg, um, uh, it gets painful at times, um, and I'm not certain what that what that means. Now, I did have some problems in my lower lumbar uh, region with several of the discs uh, previously that left me uh, pretty much uh, on a cane or on a walker. But we worked through that, and I and I recognize that that might indeed be uh, something Kundalini-related. So I turn well, it over to you. Well, the, the, certainly the slip disc can be repaired by the Kundalini. Uh, there is actually no part of the body that cannot be repaired by the Kundalini. The Kundalini can pretty much repair any aspect of the human system. But, but will it do that? Well, now that's a different question because uh, the the... The problem uh, has been created uh, by the, either by the circumstances that the individual has gone through or by the individual themselves. And so there's levels of teaching that a person can receive from the Kundalini by having the injury intact and, and uh, beginning to work on it through the lessons that the, inner, that, the, that, the, uh, that the pain is giving, that the situation is giving. Now, with regard to your heart, um, if you have good insurance, I would just go in and get it looked at. I mean, there's no problem with that. To make sure that you trust the MD that you have and that he doesn't create a problem because he's got a fortune payment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, I do have insurance. I, uh, <laughs> the reason why I hesitate is because I went in and had the catheter put in um, uh, my lower, one of my legs, and uh, they saw nothing. Um I even went to a hospital once uh, because I was concerned about it, and they could find nothing. Mm. So, um, well, there's also my, a hiatal hernia can can uh, can really uh, mimic a heart, you know, a cardiac condition, and uh, you know, with it extending down the left arm, you know, that's something that I would encourage you to uh, to go ahead and have a have a cardiologist look at. Um, Always maintaining the the understanding that the Kundalini can fix this anytime in any way. Uh, you need to really kind of hold that as the primary uh, focus of information, regardless of what you're being told. Okay. Now, if, okay. if the MD, you got to remember that the MD will also be influenced by your Kundalini. Mm. Okay. 
if that if and if that is the case, then you know pay attention and and see what's going on, and then let your Kundalini help you feel what the appropriate course of activity is. For instance, I had a very similar thing coming into Lords, uh, you know, uh, last week. Uh, I went into Lords and I was having some, you know, what felt like cardiac issues, and I just gave it up to Lords and gave it up to the Kundalini manifestation that's there in Lords, and you know, it cleared it up right away. So I knew it was just another level of blockage that uh, that uh, I was being given so that I could talk about it with other people. I often find the Kundalini using me as a guinea pig, as a, as a teaching tool. Uh, so <laughs> now with, uh, with your legs, uh, I think your legs are clear. Uh, I don't think that, because like you say, they did put the catheter down there and everything looks clear. Good. And I think that would be more of a Kundalini issue uh Without having to to undergo any kind of an MD diagnosis, but I am not a doctor, so of course you must go ahead and uh, and uh, and communicate with your primary care physician and see what is best for you in that regard. However, that being said, and I needed to say that because you know I it's a responsible thing to do. Um, that being said, the Kundalini is in charge of your entire system. It is in charge, Fasci. It is what is holding your body together at this moment. So understand that, realize that, and, and you know, I, I have to even, I, I'll joke around a lot about the MDs, but not all MDs are, are the same, and not all have Porsche payments. You know, some have <laughs> land, land Rover payments and whatever. But, uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I happen to I happen to know some very very gifted qualified MDs here in Sonoma County, and uh, they know about the Kundalini. They know about it. They 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 belong to the group, and some of them listen listen to the show, and you know they're they're you know they don't have anything really bad to say about what we're doing. They they understand that there's a very uh, limited level of, of information about the Kundalini in the world, and so it's you know they're somewhat appreciative about what we're doing here. Uh, but that being said, you know don't if you've got good insurance and it, and it's not going to hurt you, then go in and get it all checked out. Make sure that there's nothing wrong uh, of a medical nature, and then once once you're sure of that, then you know that the Kundalini is trying to tell you something. And from there, you can discern. What that message is now. Let's see. Message from the heart chakra extending down the left. Well, here we go. Sacred feminine is coming down the left, and the left leg is also in pain, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And so we've got a whole level of of pain that's ex- that's existing along the left side of the body, the sacred feminine side of the body, and extending all the way up to the heart chakra. So, where have you had uh, relations with femininity? That may have not that that may have been blocked. Where have you had painful uh, scenarios within a within a, a male female relationship uh, context that that didn't end well that that maybe you know was painful for either people and and if you can go back into your history and certainly not asking you to do that now but if you can go back into your history and kind of learn and discern where some of these painful experiences may have originated, you can then initiate forgiveness into that pattern and relieve that blockage. I think I think that there is a very, very, very definite message being given to you, uh, Fashi, with regards to sacred femininity and bringing that energy up, bringing that energy up the left side. There's something called a horseshoe activation. It's fairly common where people will activate uh, the left side, will go up the left side of their body, it'll travel up and go over the top of their head and then down the right side of the body. It's called a horseshoe activation. And, uh, you know, you, you still get a spinal sweep out of that whole thing, but it, it, it doesn't come up in the way that people would think that it's just coming up the spinal channel. You know, it comes around the top and the upper part of the body, and then it comes up the uh, spinal channel. So, you know, this may okay. be something that, that you're looking at with regards to to your kundalini process as well. And let's see if I look some more to you. Yeah, and there's some issue with your uh, solar plexus. 
um, validation for for being worthy, validation being you know worthy enough for for the Kundalini for the divine ascent up the spine. And I, you know, if you have any questions about that, I'll answer it right now. You are absolutely worthy to have this occur, and uh, and uh, more than worthy. <laughs> Thank you. You're doing great. I didn't. I didn't use any of the sacred male photographs accidentally. I realize that. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Thank okay. you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Very Let much. me know how things go. Let me know how things go with you, okay? I certainly will. And I, I did send my uh, snail mail address to you. Oh, good. Well, I have As you requested. Gift. I have that gift. Okay. Very good. Very good. Okay. Excuse All right. Me. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Okay, and hello. I would like to invite anybody else who wants to call in in the remaining 24 minutes that we have here. The number is 347 I'm glad that, that uh, Foschi and Rosemary and Suntara uh, were able to give uh, their their experiences with this. It's it's such a huge subject. I could do three shows on it, but I'm not, because I don't want to give you all the information. I want you to experience some of what we're talking about here. Everybody's got blockages, so everybody has the opportunity to experience what it is to resolve a blockage. And once again, as I've mentioned before, forgiveness Forgiveness is one of the best ways to resolve a blockage, but also surrendering to the kundalini. So here, let me give you a great example. Another person that I, I cannot name because, you know, I, well, I, I suppose I could, but I won't. Um, he, would, he was very, very uh, prayerful, a very, very prayerful individual. And prayer, like meditation, is kundalini conducive, meaning that it will produce uh, a stronger kundalini uh, a current in a person. And the kundalini uh, basically communicated to the person that, okay, enough prayer, no more prayer. You're, you're hyper-stimulating your body, and this is not good. No more prayer. And so the person was given the, the, the kundalini version of a, of a uh, conversation about what not to do, and the, and the person ignored the kundalini. And so the very next prayer session that the kundalini, that the person went, the kundalini gave them the sensation of hot knives being sunk into the top of their head. Hot knives being sunk to the fontanelle. Uh, you need to pay attention to what the kundalini is telling you. Absolutely. There you go. I finally made an absolutist statement. and I'll, <laughs> I'll say it again. You need to be cogent and you need to surrender to what the Kundalini says absolutely to you. This is an absolute thing that I will suggest that you do. And, and, and in many ways, it'll be in no uncertain terms, uh, especially when it has to do with, with over-amping the, the person's body uh, through either prayer or meditation or even doing the five Tibetans, you know, I tell people, oh, do the five Tibetans. They're part of the safeties. Well, they won't do just 21. They'll do 64 or whatever, thinking that, wow, more is better. Well, it isn't. It isn't. The body is a very, very finely tuned instrument, and you don't tighten those strings so tight that they snap. And they will snap. They'll snap. And so, you know, once again, you look at the idea of the ego uh, perpetrating a blockage on the, on, the, on the consciousness of the individual. And so, of course, this is why many of the ancient Hindu and the rishis would say, hey, don't let the ego make your choices for you. Certainly not within a Kundalini context. Okay. Your wants and desires don't count anymore. Your wants and desires don't count anymore. It's what the kundalini wants is what counts. That is what counts. And so if you have a, a whole suite of blockages, like Centara mentioned, if you have a, a blockage, and a layers of blockages, you need to listen to your kundalini. And if you don't have kundalini, then listen to your body. 
Okay, and listen to the body and listen to what the body is telling you and begin to really forgive these blockages. Some of the blockages you must tolerate. Some of the karmic blockages that a person receives, they are not there to be removed. They are there to teach tolerance and patience and perseverance uh, within a difficult, painful scenario. So you get a lot of people that are having you know, that come in with, with MS or with uh, any any kind of a, of a whole, uh, many levels of different uh, um, challenging uh, body arrangements. You know, they're, they're in a wheelchair, they, you know, whatever the, the, the case is, uh, uh, you know, those blockages are there on purpose and they are to be tolerated and they are to be, it, it's a faster school, really. Uh, the, the people that are come into this uh, that are paraplegic or, or quadriplegic or have any any uh, of a series of of, uh, of ailments that cause them not to be able to to live a, a liberal a life as as people that don't have them. These people are in very 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 uh, fast schools of learning, and these are blockages that the person is learning to get through. Okay, uh, blockages will exist also in the major organs, and I need to say this: uh, the liver can have blockages, the kidneys can have blockages, the lungs, the heart, the the uh, you know the intestines, the stomach, the 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 pancreas. All of these uh, organs can have blockages within them, and they'll be associated with some of the major plexi of the of the chakras. So you know. Uh, so the adrenals and the kidneys, well, those will be uh, situated within the realm of the second chakra, or the uh, you know the the rectum and the and the uh, genitals, reproductive organs will be within the uh, the uh, the uh, the authority of the first chakra, and so on and so forth. Um, these specific areas can have blockages too. Remember that most of the blockages that a person may have come from societal programming, come from the interaction that the individual had with society as they were growing up or as they have developed within the workplace scenario or the relationship scenario or any of the emotional or mental or psychological or physical scenarios that a person finds themselves. You typically will not have spiritual blockages um, per se. Uh, you can have levels of a blockage developed through belief system, but, but the belief system blockages are are, are are far more associated with with uh, the the physical, the mental, the emotional, or the psychological before they are uh, uh, with the with the actual spirituality. The spirituality of the individual is is very advanced and, and is watching and and is learning uh, what it is to to be a higher self and things of that nature. So most of the belief system blockages, uh, and, you know, it, it goes with all of the different belief systems. You know, all of them have have levels of competition that they like to provide their their people, uh, the people who believe in them. And so, yes, Santara, I see that you're, you're red here. Oh, hi. I was just thinking, Chris, and like, this might sound strange, but I really haven't needed to know what all my blockages were specifically um, or to name them or to understand exactly what was going on because I, you know, I, I found that with the safeties, like if, when I took on the safeties as my practice, the safe, by, by responding to things with the safeties, by surrendering, by, you know, bringing, by choosing a safety to a specific situation, the safeties, in a way, was all I needed to do for unblockages that I didn't need to name always to unfold and change, you know? What do you think? Well, that's what, that was my experience anyway. Well, I, I, I think you're that, absolutely... You know, we don't have to be so focused on, you know, what exactly is happening in our bodies. Well, I mean, to... even with the... Well, it depends on how severe the blockage is. Uh, if the blockage is actually causing physical pain, like uh, you know, like many of them do, well, then you want to know. You're going to want to know what that thing is. But you're right. In the in the larger context, 
If you practice the safeties, well, one of the main practices of the safeties is forgiveness. And so you don't need to know the name, as you're saying. You don't need to know the cause. You don't need to know the, you know, what's going on with it. You don't need to know how it, how it arrived unless it's, it's something that you created in this life. But you just forgive, forgive, forgive. Let the forgiveness do its work with you. And it will. It will. So you bring and up a very... And it does, very, and it brings... It brings, it brings more to you when you begin to do it. It unfolds in waves. It reaches right back in and right forward in waves that, you know, is, is amazing, Chrism. That has been well, my experience anyway. And, and for people that don't know where the safeties are, go to Kundalini Awakening Systems 1.com, uh, and then uh, that's the numeral 1.com, and then go into the, uh, the website that I want to give a – a very strong thank you to Glenn Ola of Australia for uh, for developing. He's done a wonderful job with that. The safeties are the fourth button down on the left side menu. Go in there and practice those once a day at least. All of them, not just the five Tibetans, not just the, the alternate nostril breathing or the pranayama, not just the meditation, but the forgiveness, the tolerance, the love, the service. Practice all of the safeties. And your blockages will keep begin to disappear one by one, two by two, three by three. Um, and Chris, and what about? Can I ask you about the um, crucible of reversal? That's so effective. Maybe you could say a little bit about that. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I suppose. No, <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> It's just, no, but it's, I mean, it is very effective. I mean, even in terms of, okay, even without thinking about entities, even in terms of ego response, you know? Oh, see, that was written the in response. Ever, it was written in response to hell realms. Um, that's basically I know that. How, how I took myself out of those areas. Uh, but I'll tell you, uh, yeah, I think it's it's worthy of mention, my dear, and thank you for suggesting it, and I will. Uh, crucible reversal is about changing your behavior purposefully changing your behavior if uh and i'll I'll use easy examples um if you're the person that's used to cutting off people on the freeway well you're going to stop doing it and you're going to gently merge your car very very considerately into the stream of traffic on the freeway and even though your ego and 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 your your programming has said no no you got to Force yourself in there. Who cares if they're haunting, you know? You have to reverse that behavior. So you, this is the crucible of reversal is, is you reverse the behaviors that, that, have, uh, that have been trapping you inside of a, of a, of a blockage or of, a, of an area or a situation that is detrimental to yourself and to the other people around you. The crucible of reversal is extremely effective. Uh, you know, you know, I, I should actually, uh, you know, bring that into the safeties as well because it is so effective in 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 many many areas of the Kundalini awakening. Um, the crucible of reversal, you can find that, uh, I believe, on the Yahoo group or no, no, the uh, the Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com in the in the articles. So. And also, Prism, if I can interrupt, Eileen has just posted it on Facebook as well. So Facebook <laughs> people can, can read it there. Thanks, Eileen. Thank, thank you, Eileen. And let's, let's talk She's about spot on there. She really is. Uh, I would like to thank you, Amelia Centaur, and your husband, John, for uh, providing this, this Blog Talk radio show. I'd like to thank uh, Eileen, Laurel, and Glenola. And, uh, and uh, you know, many of the people that, that, that constantly go out of the way to help the AS1 and the KS1 community uh, continue to, to bring this information into the populations. Uh, I appreciate Centara and Rosemary and Fashchi for lending their voices and their experiences into this conversation so that it's not all just, you know, Chris and doing this, this two-hour monologue because... You can you know you can only hear one person talk so so long before you start getting tired of it. <laughs> I know that. So 
So I appreciate uh, I appreciate everybody who has partaken of this program, and I I appreciate Tim and Nathaniel and 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 Madhava uh, Tadi and Bruno Amadori and and uh, everybody who is who is working to help uh, the Kundalini community come into information. And I want to I want to specifically thank Bruno Amadori uh, for translating uh, the information into Spanish for the Spanish community and. and uh, uh, thank you, Bruno, and, and, and uh, uh, thank you, everyone, who is helping uh, in these areas. It's very, very, very important. And no, you don't get a lot of accolades. You don't get a lot of applause. Uh, and you may not even, you know, hear a, a response uh, uh, of your question from me. Sometimes I'm just not allowed to say. Uh, but it is appreciated with, with what you're doing and how you're doing what you're doing. And if you're living the city, Oh my gosh, you are really lending uh, grace to this world, and hopefully, other people can take advantage of that. So I thank you all, and I thank you who are listening in the archives. Thank you very, very much. You know who you are. Uh, so Santara, Rosemary, and everybody in the in the chat group, I'd like to go ahead and and wrap up this program. Thank you all for participating and listening. And I'll talk with you again next week. Goodbye.